the graphs of the hyperbolic trig functions are quite dissimilar from the graphs of regular trig functions. Let's take a look. Here is the hyperbolic sign. Certainly looks nothing like the sign. Looks kind of polynomial at first glance. But rather than a polynomial, what this is actually looking like is exponential growth, which considering that the hyperbolic sign was defined in terms of exponential functions, shouldn't be super surprising. If we compare the graph of the hyperbolic sign, to one half e to the power of x and zoom in a little, we see that as x gets large, the hyperbolic sign very quickly and asymptotically approaches this curve. I mean, if I scrolled up a little, and I made these two curves be the same color. They're not visually distinguishable anymore. What about as X gets large in the negative direction as we go down here? This is also exponential. Um, negative point. 5e to the negative x. You see, once again, this hyperbolic sine function becomes indistinguishable from an exponential function. What about the other hyperbolic functions? Well, unlike the sine and the cosine, which look similar, they are literally just phase shifts of each other. The hyperbolic cosine has a graph that's quite different from the hyperbolic sign. It's turn these off so you can see it unobscured. It looks like this. A bit parabola-esque, but it's growing much faster than a parabola. It is growing exponentially. Yeah. And it's growing exponentially in this direction as well. So that's the hyperbolic sine and the hyperbolic cosine, the cinch and the cosh. The hyperbolic tangent, sorry, that's the hyperbolic cotangent. The hyperbolic tangent looks like this, a lot like the arc tangent actually, except that this asymptote is one and this asymptote is negative one. And the hyperbolic tangent and the hyperbolic cotangent look very different from each other. You see, here's the hyperbolic cotangent. That being said, having said that they look different, if we look at them both at once, you see that's really only near the origin. When X is large, these things are visually indistinguishable. And when X is small, 
these curves are visually indistinguishable. It's only when x is near zero that we see this difference. Something similar is true with the hyperbolic secant and the hyperbolic cosecant. Here's the hyperbolic secant, the hyperbolic cosecant, and they look quite dissimilar but only around the origin. When X is large, these curves are indistinguishable. When X is small, these curves are indistinguishable.